So welcome back to uh, vocabulary lesson number one of module one, unit one. And in all our lessons, there will be a video element. Sometimes there are two or more. And here we get a chance to see how a teacher presents the word coach to her class. Mm. And after that, we're going to be looking at the description that best fits each presentation. I got it. So one minute video. Cool. Space. Anyone? Coach. That's right. It's a coach. 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 Okay, everybody. Listen, everyone. Coach. 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 Okay. Look, it's a coach. Listen, coach, coach. There's very slight differences, e aren't there? O A C H. Okay, everyone. Mm. Look, it's a coach. Listen, coach, coach. Okay. So let's see what we remember. Ah. She presents the she presents the spoken form, but not the meaning. Okay. Um, that was extract number two. There was no picture. Okay. So it's good to have that little note on the side, just in case. Otherwise, hmm. it like a lot of listening activities could become a memory test. Yeah. So the next one, she presents the meaning, then the spoken form. So that was showing a picture and then repeating it a few times. Yeah. Yes. I think that was the last one. Me too. Okay. Then she presents the meaning and elicits the spoken form. I think that was the first one. Yes. I remember asking, she was asking, what is it? Right? Yeah. And then the third one is when she wrote on the board, right? Right. Okay. That was the only one that she wrote on the board as well. It was, yeah. Finish the quiz. View the questions. Oh, it helps that we've been through this lesson a number of times. <laughs> you have a good memory too. Maybe. So, um, yeah, so for you, which one did you like or what variation would you choose if you had your own? Probably I liked uh, extract three, presenting the meaning and then the spoken form and then the written form. Mm -hmm. I think I'm trying in my mind, I'm trying to um, lessen the opportunity for there to be misunderstanding. Uh, mm. I'm always trying to think, what's the clearest way I can teach? That's right. got a big priority for me. How about you? Um, I like combining one with three. So I like to give a chance to elicit meaning from anyone in the class who might know it already. Yeah. And then if necessary, I will model it. Um, mm. But I also really like the fact that it can be clear with the picture and also giving the written form. I noticed that when there wasn't a picture, it really felt wrong. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Something missing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I rarely use pictures these days. Uh, you know, I just rarely hmm. do. And uh, hmm, interesting. Is that because of the need uh, that there's not so much need in your context? 
Yeah, and and just a lack of time and too many vocabulary, and uh, mm. that I have a sense that I can teach it uh, through gestures or through. Um, oh, often it'll be just eliciting uh, what the Japanese word is. I, you know, that's a whole new uh, issue. But uh, for expediency's sake or for speed, mm -hmm. okay, um, sometimes it's just quickest to elicit it from somebody who does know it. Yes. So because you're in an EFL context and all your learners share the same first language, that's a very efficient way to deal with vocabulary for sure. But, but uh, there's, it's still, do you think it's still controversial or not? I think it's very valid to use it as a, as a tool. And when, when the whole, when it's a mono, what's that word? Um, well, when it's a group of people all from the same country, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it goes into a, a much bigger argument when uh, long ago when it was, uh, you know, zero Japanese or ne zero first language is allowed in the room. Mm. Um, so maybe we won't get into that right now. Okay, save that for another time. Or in the teacher's room. Ah, good place. Happy to argue with anybody about that one. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's look at the next activity. Good, good.